systematically evaluating the wax impact, because we're talking about wax impact, also renewable energy and energy efficiency projects and policies are growing in development countries. So all the work you have been presenting here and you will continue to present after lunch and all people do it, if we cannot get, I think I see three people, Uganda mentioned it, all of you mentioned it, if we, we don't solve this problem, I think we will just be, uh, I don't want to really use the word wasting our energy, but I think our research will not bring that impact, which we are finding. And all the reports from the United Nations, World Bank, IMF, all of them, they keep saying about that, particularly with Africa, you have countries completely blank. And I will show you a recent report where if I come to a country, you will find it blank. There's no data. And this is, this is a big, big, big problem. And I think this is what I always start by saying there should be an area call for action. So probably one of the things we could do to try to see how we can address this aside the research we're all doing. Now, I know you all know this. It's very basic. but. Uh, Whenever people talk about energy in Africa, I would say to people, uh, you need to remind yourself with this is uh, the United Nations 2013 report, very famous. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are talking about 2030, the number of people could lose their life. You remember who mentioned about, uh, oh, the, the, from Zambia, you remember you mentioned that? Mm -hmm. This is exactly what the United Nations is saying. So the number of people going to lose their life in Africa, for as one of the developing country of the developing world, it, will be higher than those who are losing their life from malaria, tuberculosis, HIV. So always, I know you know it, but we need to remind ourselves, we are dealing with a very recent issue here. And I, I always remember I engage in community activities or the council in London, when people say, why ID cars, terror? I keep saying to people, the government have every right to do that because they are talking not about terrorism, they are talking about people losing their life. What is the end result of terrorism? You will be, you will die. So this is the same thing with energy. We're talking about people losing their life. So two issues. Lots of reports from the IMF. I'm quite happy, by the way, to share all these reports, all these links. Anyone can email me. From the United Nations and UN, World Bank. All of them, they are generally agreeing and arguing that the cost of renewable energy is going down. That's one thing. Most of them, they are arguing that. And secondly, most of them, they are arguing there is a growing usage of, uh, of renewables in developing countries. But despite that, renewable, we have a long way to, do, to go into Africa, but then we, we really need to consider quite seriously the role of the public-private partnership in actually this particular task of renewable energy that we can actually help in electrifying uh, Africa. So two questions I really want to address them quickly. Has Africa, by the way, I got that sign like you as well, after question, I didn't notice that. So it seems like there is something going on here. That's not my side. Has Africa benefited from those global uh, trends? I can see the T is missing. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> anyway, in this, <laughs> what are the challenges still facing African countries to grasp such opportunities? And how African governments incorporate the critical role of private sector and BPP in their development strategy? What I have seen so far, even when we were in the UN last two months, Many countries, they don't even know how to deal with BBB, how to, to, to use it, how to deal with the private sector. Mm -hmm. And that's why the UN uh, Knowledge Center in Bonn is going to, at uh, the uh, last two months, they just launched it, they're going to run program for the whole UN agencies across the whole world to coach them and train them on how to deal with BBB. Because if someone can't themselves with BBB, how they? Now, I will move from this quickly Investment in renewable energy is being argued by the way it banned several times. This is one of the big reports, also available online. Therefore, greater volume of private investment will be critical to scale up generation, because we're talking about scalability here. And therefore, expand and improve electricity supply. So it's been argued by all of them, well it Bank and so on. It's also being argued by people from academia. This is our, I don't know if you know him, he's very famous guy, Professor. He's our director of, Sussex, of the Sussex Energy Group and the Center for Innovation. Uh, he's well known, and this is one of his papers. He said there is a great need for mobilizing financial resources to expand local energy services delivery in the developing world. And he's been arguing for a long time, pro poor public private partnership are one of the best mechanisms to supplement and overcome government. Because we all know African countries, by default, they are poor. So let's just take that as a fact. They are poor countries. I'm talking about very expensive. So he has been arguing, this is one of the papers. 
So I'm not going to go through this, but this is a definition of the World Bank about what is BBB, and this is a definition of the United Nations just last, uh, this, in the recent report, which is just two months ago, about what we mean by partnership. Because you need to educate governments in Africa about what we mean by partnership, and also you need to educate them about what we mean by BBB and how they can work. Now, there are different models in the literature. Uh, Lots of them, donation delivery model, cash model, where you come. Cash model normally for small, uh, not large scale, uh, uh, so uh, energy sources if you like, and the customer credit, uh, not free, it's fee for service model and so on. There's lots of way doing, going on. When you review some of these countries, the one I just came across, like Morocco, South Africa, Mozambique, Nigeria, Zambia, Kenya, uh, you will see they will not go out of these four models somehow or not. Now, what are the challenges? This is for me like, always the slide I use whenever it comes to Africa. I know all countries are different. The UK is not like France, France is not like Switzerland, and the same thing applies to Africa. But in Africa, the heterogeneity is very different. Here, when we talk about when we fly from here to Geneva or to Denmark, we don't feel, or to Italy, we don't feel much of the system. The system is more or less the same, whether we are poor or rich. But in Africa, it's not. Huge. No, but they said in order to keep the country as it is, they are spending efforts and money just to keep it safe somehow from lots of, uh, lots of conflict going across all borders. But most importantly, 70% of African population, I think is more probably, as they said, is growing. They don't have electricity. We might be about 70%, which is 600 million or maybe more. So this is the issue. And I think. Critically, this is for me the one which is also part of the big problem for Africa is most of them are, take, are holding mobile phones, but if you send someone a PDF, you will need 10 minutes to download it. So they have the mobile phone, they are very active on social media, they are very active on Facebook, but when it comes to the real use of this technology, they are not. Most ministries I have seen in Africa, you go to the ministry, the Wi-Fi is not working. And I have made a call before. I said any, any, any university in Africa should not be given license to operate unless they can have Wi-Fi. Many universities don't have Wi-Fi in the first place. So let's move. Now, this is interesting. This is a big uh, partnership action. Actually, this is all online. You can see the methodology, how they've done it. It's a, it's a huge work. This is, I like this work. And you can check there is lots of tables, give you an idea about the progress in renewable particularly. And you can see most Africa. For example, interestingly, in Algeria, there is no records, no data. Uh, Uganda, there is no data. So probably you need to help them. And then you can see Malawi, Malawi, there is no data. But for those who have data, you can see the progress here is going for minus, minus. But the, in renewable, generally, this is one of the, of the, of the index where Africa is difficult to see what, how is it well doing compared with other countries. Because I gave you an example here. The progress in the U UK, they said, is 0.15. Not sure. They said Ireland is one. So generally, if renewable energy worldwide, there is an issue going on. It's not, it's not, it's not like other like uh, human development index where you find most of the developed countries very high, Africa is very low, sustainability, and so on. This is slightly, you need to be looked at it very carefully. But what interestingly, I found this in a couple of uh, reports. The energy or the electricity produced by Korea alone is more than the entire African continent. I checked it twice in two, three reports. Just Korea produced electricity more than the entire Africa. And then there's also <coughs> also from the World Bank report, across Africa, per capita is stored generation capacity, barely one tenth that of Latin America. So this is another thing you need to bear in mind. Now Africa also is not really as the rest of the world. They have been going through these revolutions. But not like us. Industrialization, in particular, is not that much. Very little happening in Africa. So we need to bear this in mind when it comes to renewable energy. The other thing, also, Africans are still struggling with other developmental issues: education, girls, gender issue, youth engagement, poverty. They have many, many other problems. So you also need to remember: you're talking about the continent is also struggling, is distracted by many, many other things. They will say to you, Adam. I don't even have time to understand what is the radio rate. They don't understand the seriousness of the electricity, like some of you said, or the uh, 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 diplomat said from Zambia. She said, they don't know the importance of this. Well, they have other things that 
poverty, education, and so on. So, again, Africa has already plunged with many other, what I call them, global challenges, like food production, conflict, and terrorism. is really affecting that continent more than us. Water resources, energy, health problems, ecosystem. I'm sure you all know this. I wouldn't spend time on them. One serious thing, because we, most of us here, I know we are not all from academia, but this is all we've led, but this is, we are in an academic place, Oxford. Uh, Bass, uh, UCL, all of you. In Africa, generally, I'm just giving this generalization, this is, a, this is a, being labeled by many reports. They say underperformance in research, state of academic research, is less than satisfactory. So the people who should be our counterpart, probably the professor can give more because he's been, you have more exposure to the African, you can maybe come on to that one. But they are less than satisfactory. So the people who we can shake hands with them in Africa to try <coughs> to move this research forward, they are, their research is very, very poor. Opportunities, this is the one happening in Geneva last time. The UN is taking the BBB very seriously. They have had a big conference last month, two months ago. The whole private sector came. Government, they're taking it very seriously and now they're running training. So I think it's an opportunity because the UN considered BBB as a possibility to help, as one of the tools, to help for the implementation of the entire 17 development goals. So the entire 17 sustainable development goal, the UN reviewed the, <coughs> their own web inside them to see whether BBB could be a key to implementation of the whole 17, including number seven, which you are discussing. And this is just the recommendation. I quickly was with them, but I brought this picture. I don't know if you recognize yourself there, Susan. <laughs> this is the energy she was sharing, the energy session there. So they were very relevant people. Quickly, we need to look into the revision of the guidelines with a partnership cooperation between the public and private sector. So I like the way you said, you said we, our work is to help people with training. So maybe we need to help African countries to train them on what is BPP, tell them and coach them. Secondly, set of rules and operational guidelines for partnership with the private sector, partnership pro, uh, brokering and advice facilitation, because we need to bring them together. Because it's never been tried that seriously. Streamlining responsibility within the public sector. There's so many red tapes, lots of problems within the government. If you can't get anything processed, an enhanced role for the private sector, folk and point network. And this is what this unit is hosting us next year, is doing in, in Nairobi. It is they call the private, se the private sector unit, which is trying to bring all the private sector from all Africa together, a common standard procedure, enhancing ownership and partnership. But please remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.